of the first um, filter is authenticity. You've got to be original. Original content means doing stuff that people haven't done before or differently to what people have done before. And then the second one is commerciality. Uh, you can do stuff that's authentic, but if it's not commercial, um, I wouldn't have a business. So we then throw ideas around and we work on those ideas. If we're working in the outdoors, the season's got to be right, the animal behavior has got to be right. So we know what we're doing really between now and 12 months time because everything is very finely researched. When I'm trying to work out retrospectively what the most difficult shot I've taken is, uh, I tend to think of stuff more recently. We all tend to, I think, have, when we're looking through the rear view mirror, we tend to remember our more recent work. But I think, um, Work with tigers is always tough and polar bears because they're scarce and they're dangerous. I had a tough trip in South Sudan during the Civil War um, because there's a lot of guns around and people are more dangerous than animals. So probably my most difficult assignment was in the Civil War in South Sudan in 2013. There are so many animals that we have shot, which we could do better. And then there are animals that we've never ever shot at all well, or well, we haven't shot at all. I think a big moose in September in the Canadian mountains or the Alaskan mountains is something we'd, we'd love to get right, but they're dangerous. And you have to do a lot of homework to know how to get close and safe. Uh, we've never shot orcas that well, partly because I don't go out and do underwater photography, it would be orcas breaching through the water. I've been a photographer for 35 years and there's been enormous progress in camera equipment. Uh, digital cameras make uh, immediacy of feedback uh, very helpful. In the old days in film, you sometimes had to wait two or three weeks to see whether you were getting it right by which stage you'd left. So uh, the progression of camera equipment certainly makes a photographer's job easier, but it's also made photography as an industry um, over populated with content. There are, everyone's a photographer now, whereas in 1985, it was a strange thing that weird people did. So there's been an explosion of content. Um, in the world, that, I, that as I travel, clearly I'm conscious of population growth. I'm not so conscious of global warming, because even though I accept that it has, it's very marginal. Um, we're talking one degree to, I still go to some very, very cold places. So it would be disingenuous of me to turn around and say, uh, the world's warmed up. I'll be in two months time, I'll be in places where it's minus 45 degrees. The um, debate about wildlife photography and fine art is uh, quite an emotional one. Uh, you, can, you can be very careful what you say. Um, and the ultimate determiner of that is the audience. It is not up to the photographer to turn around and say, that's a wildlife picture or that's a fine art picture, because that would be very arrogant of the photographer to say that. It is up to the audience to say whether that's fine art or a wildlife photograph. So when you look at the big animals in the world, there are animals that are defined as predators, and then there are animals that are defined as being a big animal, like a bison's a big animal, or a muskox, or an elephant is a big animal, giraffe. They're not predators, but they're big animals, and all four of those animals kill people. They kill people by hitting them, not eating them, by stamping on them, by charging them. So there's no reason, just because you're photographing something that is a predator, uh, should be any more dangerous than shooting a big animal. When I see people looking at my work, I, um, it's always humbling for a start that anyone should look at any of my work. Uh, I want it to be um, emotional. Uh, photography without emotion is nothing. It has to be immersive, it has to be intimate, it has to be close. It has to be the soul of the animal. You have to look into 
how that animal might be feeling. And you can't do that when you're a long way away. I cannot tell you or anyone whether my art does that. You have to ask the people that are looking at my art. Um, with the new book, uh, the royalties, the choice of the royalties uh, were a decision between myself and Tom Brady. It's been an honour to work with an American icon like Tom. Uh, and we felt that it would be appropriate, given that I'm British and he's American, that we chose an American conservation organisation and a British one. And we chose Tusk because that's been my long affiliation. And Prince William, the patron, does a great job, as does the chief executive, Charlie Mayhew. And they're very good on the ground. Um, Wild Aid are very good in a kind of Californian way about influencing opinion. So they're more front end loaded, whereas um, I would say that uh, Tusk is more back end, as in the field. But they're both best in class at what they do. In terms of what the future holds for the world, in the immediate future, like the next 10 years, it is difficult to escape from the reality that the biggest difficulty is population growth. Poaching has a solution. You stop the end market or you stop the poachers. But population growth is very difficult. You can't go around every government in Africa or every government wouldn't be elected in Africa if they came to par saying from now on every couple's only allowed one kid. That's not going to get them elected. So when the amazing Greta talks to the United Nations about shame on you and responsibility, that's fine and she deserves every plaudit for um, making us stand up and take notice of where we are. But she didn't offer solutions. Um, and population growth, to stop the degree of population growth in Africa in particular, will require government action. And governments get elected. They can't be elected on the basis of zero economic growth and no children in the future. That's not a mandate for re-election. So we do have some big issues to tackle, and population growth is, is the biggest one.